Uh, this letter is for Mr. John Donahoe. He is the president and CEO of Nike. Briefly, we as leaders of the conservative color have watched with sadness and frustration as the country we love has been torn apart by violence and looting. This civil terror perpetrated and led by Black Lives Matter movement has turned American against American and possibly set race relations back decades. Black Lives Matter, a movement run by anti-Christian, self-proclaimed Marxists, hijacked legitimate calls for police reform and turned it to their own ends. This is not a group interested in constructive change through their vicious campaign to defund police and silence anyone who disagrees with them. They have destroyed livelihoods and gotten innocent children killed. It is antithetical to the nonviolence that Dr. King and the civil rights movement stood for. You and your company have helped fan the flames of this unrest by caving to support Black Lives Matter and promising financial support to their, uh, their allies. You have given Black Lives Matter a platform and as such have contributed to the chaos that is tearing apart every major city in our country. You are culpable in the violence that has wronged so many innocents in the name of the revolution. And while you have made such a show of virtue signaling against oppression here, you and your company have willfully ignored real suffering and oppression abroad. At this very moment, millions of ethnic Uyghurs are languishing in re-education camps in Western China. They are rounded up for being a minority and forbidden from practicing their faith while being forced to work as slaves in factories. These factories make products for your company that are worn and promoted by dozens of players in various athletic leagues. Yet, while this atrocity plays out at the hands of the communist Chinese government, you have been silent. You have been happy to play into the hands of anarchists at home and ignore slavery abroad. As leaders in the church, we can abide neither. We demand that you immediately sever all business ties with China and acknowledge the suffering of the Uyghur people. We demand you end your support to the violent Black Lives Matter movement and any affiliated causes. We ask you take a hard look at real injustice in the world and to remember that change comes through forgiveness and compassion, not violence. As pastors, we are not here to cancel you, as is the popular things these days. In fact, we are firm believers in sensible civic dialogue. We would like to extend the hand of Christian fraternity and offer to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to discuss these important matters and this crucial period in our country's history. If there's one thing we can agree on as a start, it's that this is indeed a crucial moment. We hope to sit down with you and engage in a spirited, respectful debate. Our goal is to heal, not to widen existing wounds. Between human wisdom and God's help, we fully believe we can solve our problems here and in the wider world together. In Christ, this is from Bishop Aubrey Shines, Pastor Francisco Vega, Reverend Derek McCoy, and Reverend Marlon Reed. Like to open up also just very briefly to say to the various reporters, various social media outlets right now, that what we are seeing happening throughout our nation is not indicative of the real DNA that this nation is really founded on. And when we have companies like Nike 
that are unfortunately helping support a Marxist regime whose own platform, by the way, states that they are anything other than pro-Judeo-Christian ethos, which this nation was built upon. Their only goal, according to their own words, is to disrupt and to make sure that the seeds of divisiveness is sown within the fabric of our nation for the purpose to separate Americans from other Americans. As clergy and as the conservative clergy of color, whose reach now has several hundred other black and brown pastors and bishops throughout this nation, we are saying as of today, enough is enough. And we are now working diligently to make sure that this company, specifically Nike, will take an approach that will offer civility, stop pushing a narrative that again is sowing into the flames of discord that already exists. And we believe if, if all of us can just sit down, especially Mr. Donahoe with you, to sit down and speak about this in respectful and in a diplomatic way, we believe that we can help bring a resolve to this great nation. Thank you. All right. Um, I, I will open up the floor for questions. Uh, why don't we start with uh, Penny Starr, who is on. Hi, can you hear me? We can, Penny. Okay, good. Thanks for doing this. I'm very interested in this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I, I guess I'd like to know um, how, how you, are you delivering? Did you do this by delivering a letter? Was it on social media? And how is the word getting out that you've actually you know, you're sending this letter to Nike and, and demanding, you said, I think, to cut ties with uh, China. And what did you say, just to repeat about BLM? What did you want them to do on that regard? Well, Penny, this is Bishop Aubrey Shines. I will address this and then ask Reverend McCoy to do the same thing. Starting from the last premise of your question, one of the things that we want them to do is uh, literally take a look, not based on my opinion, Penny, but based upon Black Lives Matter own stated documented position. They are anti-American. They are, according to their founders, Penny, they are a Marxist organization. Their objective is to sow seeds of discord within our nation to make sure that we continue to stay racially divided for the purpose that they can then usurp a position and take over a system here in this country with their own objective as it relates to Nike. Nike is on record for supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. You're talking about a multi-billion dollar company that is funneling funds into an organization whose only objective is to destroy America as we know it. We're seeing it, Penny, being lived out on camera night after night in our cities. And it's not just impacting one ethnic group. It is impacting all Americans. And as an American, we must stay united and ask companies like Nike to stop in the name of justice, supporting a group while they turn a blind eye to China, who's producing this product that are not only causing the Uyghur ethnicity, small minority group there, to go through re-education camps. They are also destroying churches, not allowing free religion to exist. So while they are asking Americans to take a look at America, their number one producer is a nation that is totally antithetical to the very premise of this nation. And this is why we're doing the work. And Reverend McCoy will be able to speak on this as well. Thank you, Bishop Shines. The really, and I want to say this uh, as a precursor to even your question, Penny. Um, it, we feel like it is morally inconsistent for Nike to say that they want to erase 
eradicate racism here in the U.S. and yet overseas, you have slave worker factories still in existence and so many other issues uh, that they're propagating. And so we know we have to address this issue in the U.S. with a company like Nike. Now, for your question specifically, letters have been written. Uh, outreach has been done and it will continue to be done around this country with other uh, leaders within the clergy and within other sectors, as well as phone calls have been made. And so, you know, to even folks that may not necessarily agree with every principle that we have, but we're reaching out because we want to be able to uh, sit and talk with anybody who's willing to talk on these issues to make sure that we can make inroads and make a difference. Thank you. All right, and I'm going to now open it up to um, Ms. Kakatani from the Free Beacon. Hi, uh, my name is Yu Chi. I'm reporting for the Washington Free Beacon. Thank you again for making time. Uh, I, I really appreciate it listening to all of you. Uh, I guess my question is, how has the BLM movement uh, specifically affected your particular community? How have you guys seen, uh, you know, unrest and riot? affect your community? Uh, has it affected members of your flock? Uh, you know, how has it disrupted your communities, uh, if it has disrupted your communities? Um, and uh, yeah, what do you, what's the general sense you get from your, your flock in terms of how average your every, everyday people of color feeling about uh, this Black Lives Matter experience? Reverend Reed? We can't hear you, sir. I think there may be a technical difficulty. There he is. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Thank you for having me on today. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, first of all, uh, on several fronts, uh, Black Lives Matter has been very divisive um, in the sense that I've seen in my own congregation, as well as across the city of Detroit. I'm, I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Um, people, families, um, churches, church members, people have even begun to question Christianity because of the arguments that Black Lives Matter has highlighted. Um, we are seeing a lot of divisive talk uh, among even other clergy. This is one reason why uh, we have joined together and started Conservative Clergy of Color, because we feel like there's a voice that's not being heard to address these issues. Uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of black, traditional black churches and black pastors and pastors of color have somehow aligned themselves with Black Lives Matter. And I was just reading a report the other night about how even some of our suburban churches and even some of our white Christian churches are now denouncing uh, white supremacy and all these sort of things and aligning with the Black Lives Matter. But what they don't know about Black Lives Matter is that you can easily go to their website and read what they believe. They are openly denouncing Christianity and the Judeo-Christian moral ethics that this country is founded on. They are openly uh, against the nuclear family. They, they want to subvert uh, the, 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 the patriarchy or fathers or men being the head of households. These are all Christian doctrine, Christian beliefs, Christian ideology, and they are infiltrating much of the youth today to go align and to, and to go along with this cry for justice. And first of all, Black Lives Matter's whole premise is, is only when there is a crime against a black person or an unarmed black man, if it's done by a white cop or a white person. And we know statistically that, uh, you, you, that I believe it was only nine, it was out of, out of 42 million black people in this country, there were nine incidents last year, as to, to my knowledge, of, of uh, black people or black men, unarmed black men being attacked or brutalized by police. That's nine as compared to uh, the rampant death rate among black people, 7,000 black men um, killed every year by another black person. You are five times, if you're a man or a person of color, you're five times more likely to be killed by someone else who is black. Uh, not to mention that as Christians, we oppose things like abortion. And with 900 black children being aborted daily, these are issues that should be um, germane to the black culture, should be something that black people are concerned about. But Black Lives Matter doesn't highlight any of these issues that are tearing apart. If you just even look in Chicago, the death toll and the death rate, the violence in Chicago, um, and it's primarily in the black community where these things are happening, there's no voice or there's no outcry, there's no marching, there's nothing to address any of these issues. So it's not really Black Lives Matter, it's really some Black Lives Matter that we can use politically to push an agenda. Uh, I think it's very evident if you follow Black Lives Matter or read their website, and it's plainly 
right in front of their family, what, what we believe. They do not support any type of Christian Judeo ethic, ethic value. We believe that America was founded on these values. And, and uh, uh, it seems, or I would, I'm going to go as far as say it in more than seeing it, it is what they're doing. They're trying to subvert this whole system and to create social unrest because they have a different agenda. And that agenda is not about black lives. It's just the firebrand and the touchstone that they're using to gain uh, political capital in the world to push their agenda. All right. Uh, Matter of fact, if I can add one quick statement to that, uh, and uh, Reed said something so great. But I, I just want to make sure we point out, Martin Luther King said this, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And for us right now, we're really wanting to focus that the hypocrisy of a company like them calling them out and, and, and really looking at trying to profit off of these issues while you know rampant concentration camps and slave worker camps really are going on in China, it is really appalling. I, I think that the, the hypocrisy of Black Lives Matter and the hypocrisy of corporations like Nike that support them and fund money to them, this is the issue. This is the issue where we, where we feel needs to be addressed. <clears throat> All right, let me uh, throw it back to Penny Starr for the next question from Breitbart. Breitbart, excuse me. Hi, <clears throat> thank you so much. Um, what, um, what do you say to the people in the Black Lives Matter movement who claim that America is systemically racist? And this is a, that's a talking point that you hear everywhere in the media. Um, and that's, I think, one of the talking points that's driving this is that they're saying to the core, America is, 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 you know, is racist. Can you address that? Uh, we're going to ask uh, Pastor Vega of Atlanta, Georgia, to do so. Well, I think it's, uh, thank you, Penny, and thank you, Bishop. I think it's an interesting to note that the type of racism that would elect uh, to, uh, two times to public office, an African-American president, how can 13% of the population in and of itself, uh, 13 to 14% of the population elect an African-American, not only twice, I think the... Uh, the backfiring effect of seeing almost 50 states where we see even billions and billions of damage and we see Black Lives Matter, and it isn't just African Americans. Statistics show us there's uh, whites and Latinos and people marching in streets, holding signs, and the entire ethos is we say Black life is valuable and matters. So I think it's particularly interesting to say that our nation is a racist nation when we see movements in 50 cities across all ethnicities saying that we value black life. I think that flies back in the face of the, of the one sided narrative that we're seeing in the culture that our nation is endemically or systematically racist. And let me add Penny uh, to that as well. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, the Washington Times actually picked up a op-ed that I produced with that very question. And that was, is America systemically racism? Well, it is. And if we're going to talk about systemic racism, we're going to all have to be intelligent and honest in that intelligent response. It has come, by the way, primarily from one political party. It's the party that fought against the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. It's the same party that gave us Jim Crow laws. It's the same party that gave us the KKK. It is actually the same party that continues even to this day to separate Americans based on their ethnicity and or their gender, and that is the Democratic Party. However, as conservative clergy of color, we're not here uh, pushing and or advocating for any particular group. We're just simply saying that there are some problems in America, and these problems continue to come from certain groupings, and those groupings seem bent on making sure that we remain divided and it's coming from one quarter and again that's not a political point because again ccc we don't advocate that we're just simply saying there are some problems here and we've identified one of those problems as nike 
And Nike is supporting the same failed policies for the last couple centuries here that continues to divide America. And we at Conservative Clergy of Color, we're saying enough is enough. And we want the CEO, the president, Mr. Donald of Nike to be responsible enough to realize that every time his organization gives millions of dollars into a Marxist organization, the very thing that you say, Mr. Donald, that you're supporting, you're not supporting because you're helping feed a narrative that's keeping America divided. And conservative clergy of color, we're not standing for it. This is why we're doing the work that we're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. I will pass it back to the Free Beacon for another question. Hi, uh, just a quick clarification. Uh, the press release for said for this said that uh, you guys are also going to talk about NBA and perhaps some other companies as well. Uh, just to clarify, is this specifically about Nike or um, are you guys also going to talk about other companies? Reverend McCoy? Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, this is right now specifically addressed to Nike. However, we are talking to the NBA as well and to other organizations and companies. Uh, we wanted to make sure the topic of this opportunity, we really wanted you to understand we are going after Nike, but the NBA is right in line with it and, and the others that are there as well. Uh, in addition, there are, other, there are many others that want to stand in line with where we're coming from as far as corporations and owners, as well as even uh, major league owners uh, that are really interested in this as well. So I think we got a great opportunity in front of us to really address this. Yeah, so uh, I guess the follow-up question for that is, uh, you know, why, why Nike? There's a, been, you know, a lot of corporations that have put out, you know, Twitter statements in support of Black Lives Matter and probably also profit off of China. What, um, what made you guys think that Nike is a priority and this is, a, this is the company that we want to focus on first? Uh, Reverend Reed? Well, uh, Nike is a multi, multi-billion dollar corporation uh, located in China and in USA. And the NBA is a very, very powerful influencer on culture, especially in black culture. When you have the profiting of sneakers and gym shoes and sports paraphernalia sold by Nike, and you see it uh, propagated throughout the black communities, they're profiting off of black people heavily, a lot of their money. When Michael Jordan can make millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, off of selling shoe gym shoes that cost $120 to people in, in the ghetto or people in the hood or people in the neighborhood or the black community, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're profiting heavily off of it. And the issue is, is that because they're profiting people like LeBron James and many other NBA uh, celebrities are coming to the forefront and being very vocal. And we believe that they are actually sharing misleading information, dishonest information, and they're being quiet about their association with, with the NBA and the NBA's connection with China. It's been recently revealed and become extremely evident that China is a bad actor. And so is the NBA, a bad actor. That many of these gym shoes and these clothing are made by people who are forced labor. Many of them are Christians, our fellow Christian brothers and sisters in China who are forced into these camps. There's a connection between the oppression of the freedom of religion and race in China. How, uh, how can you tolerate the injustice somewhere else and then profit off of it here in America? If this is, they are a template or a prime example of the type of hypocrisy that we're calling out. And we're not saying that we won't address other corporations, but you have to start somewhere. And Nike is a big fish. They're the whale out here because only because of their backing financially do people like LeBron James who live lavish lifestyles of rich and wealthy profiting off of people who live in poor communities, only, the, only because China's backing them do they have the strength and the, and the gall to stand up and be openly uh, uh, incendiary and creating more racial uh, uh, unrest in this country and aligning with people like Black Lives Matter. It's, they have linked together the NBA, China, the NBA, Black Lives Matter, and celebrity ball players. They all have linked together, joined together, and we feel that they need to be called out or at least be set on notice that the public should be made aware of this connection. Many people don't know it. 
And this is, uh, I believe, the beginning of trying, we're not coming antagonistically, we're trying to have an open discussion and uh, hopefully things will change. All right, uh, Penny Starr. Okay, so uh, the other, what about the NFL? Because I don't know if you've seen some of the games, but they have the Black Lives Matter right on the field in huge letters. They're allowing, well, the kneeling is a whole other issue, but they're also allowing them to put slogans and Black Lives Matters on their helmets and stuff. So what, do you, what about the NFL? Robert Vega? Well, uh, equally as well, because that has a tremendous influence on African-American and Latino culture. And when you see millions and millions of dollars in young people in inner city areas that, uh, who aspire to, to, to uh, professional sports and athletics, and you're sending a one-sided narrative that, that this is, that's creating greater civil unrest or, or, or racial tension in our nation. And then there's almost an intentional drowning out of a, a populist voice in, in the conservative community of color to which our heart here is as the, as the uh, conservative clergy of color is to represent equally and equality among those voices. When 70 to 80% of African Americans and Latinos uh, they they relate with conservative family values, Christian values, and that also including of race. When you're drowning that out of corporate bullying and corporate intimidation, where you won't allow others to to take stands or to share the other side of this narrative, I think what happens is we see a suppression of, of the First Amendment, uh, a suppression of religious liberty and right, where other Christian uh, athletes and individuals want to take stands or share things, there's this pressure. And I just think that corporate America has stepped into the fray, uh, especially things like the NFL profiteering of African Americans and Latinos regarding athletics and sports. And they're intentionally drowning out uh, what we have to say in the community of color at large. Uh, and, and, and Penny, let me uh, add to that. We are also seeing something else reflective in the work that we're doing at Conservative Clergy of Color, we're actually seeing a decline of participation in these events. Right now, NBA, NFL, they're hitting almost all-time lows of viewership. Why? Not just Blacks, not just Latino, Americans are saying enough of this. Why? Because we're putting out information to say, every time you allow the logo, a player, to sew on to his uniform and or put it upon his helmet and or you see it on the turf or the basketball court arena of BLM. And then these individuals like ourselves are now understanding that these various organizations, BLM is specific, uh, very specifically are anti-American, they're anti-family. Now we're seeing a decline in viewership. And let me just add this one small caveat. As a leader of 20 plus different ethnic groups on any given Sunday here in Tampa, Florida, I've had the privilege and still do of counseling professional athletes. And I can tell you, they are forced into this narrative often of things they don't even believe in. Case in point, when we saw Tim Tebow take and put paraphernalia on his helmet and or his face about his faith, about his belief, we saw individuals like that being forced by the same groups that are allowing these Marxists to go forth. Well, the Tim Tebow's and others, they're not allowed to project family values. They're not allowed to talk about the number one killer in American black ethnic groups, and that is Planned Parenthood. The same group that is sponsored by individuals like Nike. So in one regard, they're saying that they're for freedom, but they're sponsoring groups like BLM that are against black productivity in black communities and brown communities. We have found that there's a direct correlation as it relates to these various groups that are causing genocide within the black and brown communities, Planned Parenthood, they're supported by Nike, yet they're the number one murderers of black and brown people. There's hypocrisy that's going on here. And that hypocrisy is Nike and organizations of the same ilk 
are making sure that while in one regard, they put up Marxists like Colin Kaepernick, they use foot soldiers like LeBron James, that are, by the way, tremendous athletes, but their voices are being amplified through our mainstream media, but they won't allow voices that look like LeBron, that look like Colin Kaepernick, our voices are shut down because of the millions of dollars that groups like Nike is putting in to make sure that those foot soldiers, they're continuing to have their voices heard and amplified. And we're simply saying to the Nike president and to its board, you must stop supporting anti-American ideas such as Judeo-Christian belief systems that formed and found this nation and start looking at what you're really doing while you are doing that. You are actually supporting a regime like China that is destroying the lives of millions of its minority groups, whether they're Uyghurs or whether they are Christians, they are being destroyed by China, supported by groups like Nike. It must stop now. And there's a lot of hypocrisy with the with, with the NFL too, as well. Um, I don't think there's any uh, for sports franchise or sports um, that has made more millionaires out of black men. You have a lot of black uh, ball players who have been lifted out of poverty, virtually millionaires, uh, protesting on the field and actually harming the very institution that is paying them money. As, as, as uh, Bishop Aubrey Shimes noted, we've seen uh, the plummet in viewership, uh, the, the, the struggling they're having now, uh, all these things to do because they are now politicizing um, uh, these racial issues arm in arm with Black Lives Matter and it's reflected in the fan viewership. I think, it's a, I think this, is the, this is the level of how deep the hypocrisy goes when, when you try to create a narrative about um, oppression and racism in a country. And, and as you mentioned earlier about systematic racism, these ideas, and you propagate them in a country where you must, you, you consider yourself to be an exception because you're a millionaire. I think it's hypocrisy, but very hypocritical. All right. I think we have time for uh, one more question um, a piece. So why don't we uh, give it to the free beacon? Yeah. Um I guess I just want to come back to how the Black Lives Matter protest has affected your community. Um, you know, can you guys share some anecdotes about, you know, about riots or, or protests and how that has affected people in your block and, you know, have people actually experienced uh, the riots effect, you know, destroying their small businesses and stuff like that and, you know, has it terrorized people. I just want to, uh, I would love some anecdotes that could really bring to life the experiences honestly i can say that detroit has remained out of the rioting and looting we had mo the most of the protesting has been peaceful in detroit i can't say we have not had a lot of destruction of property in in the city of detroit but i have seen division among church members i have lost church members because of black lives matter i've lost uh friends relationships i have seen uh, a backlash on social media i'm talking about people an unfriendly walking away, stop listening to the ministry, not supporting the ministry any longer. Um, as ministers of the gospel, we, we, our ministries are funded. We are charity. We're nonprofit. When you have people that walk away and because walk away from you or, and, and <laughs> vehemently denounce you because you don't support black lives matter, which is an anti-Christian Marxist, uh, anarchist group. It seems absurd, but, uh, either we're going to either we're going to remain silent like the majority of pastors many I mean let me say this many pastors don't want to speak about Black Lives Matter because of the fear of the backlash of the loss of membership and the loss of support in ministry many of them are silent many of them believe what I believe but they won't openly say it because the backlash and the damage you talking about churches that literally I know pastors that most of their congregation is in line with Black Lives Matter. If they said anything even remotely uh, to, the, to the tune of what I'm saying, they could lose half of their congregation. 
their church could shut down. I have, I have known of churches being losing masses of members uh, and pastors had to back off and back away from it because they can either stand up and address these issues and bite the bullet and suffer the fallout, which could mean their churches could struggle and even close. So this is the backlash that I know about, but nothing as far as looting and burning. Detroit's uh, pretty much stayed peaceful. Uh, they marched up and down, but they haven't even been done. They haven't done any more rioting. They haven't done any rioting. I haven't really even done any more marching or protesting since uh, the first few weeks after the George Floyd incident. So can't speak personally about it in my city, only for what I've seen among ministry circles and family and social media. I see. Ask Vega. Well, of course, you guys are aware of the unfortunate uh, passing uh, of the issue in Atlanta with Rayshard Brooks incident. And then we noticed the, the, the looting and the burning down of predominantly black uh, owned businesses and which, which is in Atlanta, over 60 to 70% of, of, of businesses are black owned businesses. Many are not aware of that. It's an epicenter of entrepreneurship. And then, but when we see the death of Sequoia Turner, who was eight years old in our city, uh, uh, being gunned down by Black Lives Matter supporters, and that is in fact, uh, we didn't see any response to the support uh, and the outcry of her untimely death. So I've seen also the tremendous backlash in our city, which is the epicenter of civil rights that has emanated throughout the world uh, regarding a unity and racial uh, civility, a champion by Martin Luther King Jr., who obviously is, is declaring voice culturally for civil rights. And he was very emphatic in the civil rights movement of, of being a supporter of nonviolent protests. And he vehemently denounced uh, any use of, of, of riotous uh, of rioting. He said that rioting is the voice of the unheard, but that is often misquoted a statement. He continued to speak about how uh, he does not support rioting uh, that is violent, that is destructive to personal property. And when we're looking at uh, and the billions of damage in 50 states, which includes Atlanta, Georgia, I think it's time to speak up and say enough is enough. It's time to uh, galvanize and come together as community of color and as all colors and say, listen, we are Americans. We are Christians first. We are Americans second. And we want to do something to heal the racial divide and not set our country back decades. Reverend McCoy. Um, quite honestly, you know, I was thinking about a um, conversation I just had recently with a business owner uh, at a local church here, and um, they've had several pharmacies that they actually owned uh, around the city, and the three of them were looted, broken into, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff taken. And, and really, it was interesting because they, we talk, as we talked about it, they said, you know what, we can profit from doing a different style of business, but we prefer uh, to be, you know, the local pharmacist really con connecting with the community. But yet, uh, this is one of the unfortunate inc incidences that happened uh, during one of the protests. Now, I, I'm a proponent. I think protests are great in terms of, you know, it's about our free speech. At the same time, when they turn to a place where, you know, you begin to uh, loot and, and rob and pillage businesses that are have been worked hard for that have been the spirit of entrepreneurship and and the backbone of our country i think that's just wrong um and really what i think for the most part you know some of the pieces that we're saying as well is you know black lives matter everybody's talking about this and, and maybe it's not too well addressed but you know it's a quick coined saying that people wanted to jump on too fast unfortunately because of maybe miseducation misappropriation People aren't understanding the, the devastation and the hypocrisy behind it. And that's really what we're trying to do. The, the statement, do we support black lives? Yeah, we do. We support all black lives. Matter of fact, we support all lives. And we believe that they all matter. But now the, the issue, though, when we get to the, uh, the separation of this, is that we feel like this organization is not representative of so many values of people around this country. Uh, some of the, the issues that have come up are really... Uh, the height of hypocrisy. Uh, it does not stand for the fabric of the family and the community, which is really the fabric that we understand some of our families and communities are broken down. And the reason why we have to fix them and the need for the fixing is, is more uh, solidification of the family unit and, and a building up of that family, not tearing it down. And so we, we understand that this is one of those things that have been, uh, it, it can be devastating specifically to our community, 
And, and that's what we don't want to see propagated even further. We do not want to see our community even further pulled apart, further pulled apart by hatred, pulled apart, pulled, further, further pulled apart. Almost what we see in, in play is almost a spirit of Willie Lynch uh, happening within this Black Lives Matter thing, which is that whole separation uh, it, that took place in slavery that really dis, you know, uh, discombobulated the family unit, uh, and really separate work work to separate and divide. So it's really important for us to see love flourish, to see the right things addressed, and to see the truth to be prevailed. And lastly, these aberrant teachings of Black Lives Matter that are supported by organizations like Nike, they do disservice on not just on the fronts that I think so eloquently were just stated, but I'm looking at our constitution being eroded here in this case. Many of our executives as leaders, we have multi-type of individuals that have various jobs, et cetera. And I can speak to those that are executives that I shepherd over. And I can tell you their voices are being silent because of Black Lives Matter, because various companies are now taking on this idea to make sure that their employees are sensitive to the Black Lives Matter. Well, any of our congregants that have a historical view, any of our congregants that have a view of America, not like Black Lives Matter, whose agenda is to destroy Western civilization, our congregation, our congregants are being silenced by companies, which obviously is voiding their constitutional right to speak, because if they speak out, they're gonna be marginalized, they may not be promoted, and or now all attacks begin against these individuals that do not share Black Lives Matter. Well, every time a company like Nike gives validity to a group like Black Lives Matter by funding it in the millions and millions of dollars, it creates a false media narrative that this group personifies the heartbeat of America. It does not. And this is why conservative clergy of color, we're not only pushing back, we're saying there are alternatives. And if you look at their life, not just Nike, but Black Lives Matter, and again, any other French group that is supported uh, with this conclave of individuals like Mr. Donahoe at Nike, then we're gonna to continue to see the erosion of our nation. And as conservative clergy of color, as the founder, I can tell you, we will fight tooth and nail to maintain that America is still the greatest place on this earth to live. And just to add that, Bishop, um, cancel culture is the issue. Cancel culture and the eradication of our civil right of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And groups like Black Lives Matter use and will cancel culture and corporations are complicit. And many people, even our congregants, I have people that work in banks and are vice presidents in banks. I have people who work in corporate America. And now uh, they are not allowed to speak openly or to express their opinions. I have workers that work in, uh, in many different facets in corporations where they, they are ostracized and publicly put on notice if they don't agree with Black Lives Matter, the group. And that's not America. That's un-American. We ought to be able to say whatever we want to say within reason, expressing our freedom of thought and freedom of opinion. So we're talking about the absolute suppression of, of, of what has made America great in the first place, that we are free to speak our minds, freedom of the press, even with you. We are not, uh, cancel culture is an enemy to the very culture of America. Canceling anybody who doesn't agree with us. Um, the backlash of, of destruction and, and, and of anybody that has a very, or has a different opinion from Black Lives Matter and other groups like Black Lives Matter. But we're talking about Black Lives Matter primarily and how in this recent rise, and talking with many of my friends who work in corporate America, how that in, in their focus groups, how Black Lives Matter has infiltrated. These corporations are talking about giving them money and so, to the tunes of hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund them. And they don't even know what Black Lives Matter is doing with money. 
It's just to give them money for what reason? Black Lives Matter doesn't do anything for the black community. They just they're just amassing wealth, hundreds of millions of dollars to do what with it? To push an agenda, uh, to to fund political candidates that they are that are going to be in line with their agenda. Um, I don't think that the bulk of black Americans or corporations really, really know exactly what they're getting in bed with when they support people like Black Lives Matter. I think it is of the utmost importance that we address them and to address them and expose them for what they are. All right. Let's go to Penny Starr for the last question, and then uh, we will hand it back to Bishop Aubrey Shines for closing remarks. Okay, great. Um, what you touched on now, I think, is really important because I think if you ask the average person, hashtag Black Lives Matter, they say, well, what's wrong with that? Of course they matter. And they do not, I don't think that the average person, because I've done some queries myself, knows that this isn't just a hashtag. This is a political organization. It's not a hashtag. How, how do you get that word out? Pastor Vega? We'll start with you, sir. Well, remarkably, um, they were just interviewed uh, on a Zoom call, um, Patrice uh, Colors, and she actually explained, uh, and I quote, uh, when she was interviewing Habak Farag of the USC Center for Religion and Civic Culture, she clarifies that they're actually incorporating what is called Yoruba, which is a practitioner of Ifa, and when they're actually saying, uh, say their name or they're using terms like Black Lives Matter. They actually speak about uh, drawing incantations and 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 utilizing spiritism that is directly challenging Christianity. So we support the term Black Lives Matter, uh, but we also support all lives mattering. And as, as Christians, um, that was settled on Calvary 2,000 years ago, that God values Black, White, and every ethnicity in between in their lives matter. But we believe it's evolved beyond just a hashtag and we're seeing almost an Alinsky effect where the useful innocence of intentionally gaslighting the masses uh, with real issues that need to be addressed regarding maybe police reform or accountability, but that's being exacerbated to where we're watching these Alinsky type tactics to try to create a revolution, which really goes back to just one particular party, which is uh, the Democrat party. Up to date, they've raised over a billion dollars in the week of George Floyd's death, they literally raised $50 million. And as African Americans and, and Latinos and people of color were asking, where is this reparation demand when you have, or you're sitting on a billion dollars where you're funding education in inner cities and school choice and helping to raise the black and brown community out of poverty and all of the things needed for civil rights, which primarily is family reconstructionism, dealing with fatherlessness, 70 to 80 percent being led by single mothers where is the dollars if black life matters and it's not more than just a hashtag where is the actual dollars going to support and build black and brown life good question reverend reed reverend marlon reed i think i lost you no, nope, you're there. Oh, you have me? Okay. Well, I'm sorry. You, have... you were going to follow up, and then after that, Reverend McCoy. Oh, um, Black Lives Matter and the movement. I hear it all the time. I hear people constantly on social media discussing it. I support the movement and not Black Lives Matter because I've been consistently bringing up um, what Black Lives Matter stands for. I've been publicly posting uh what their website says that they believe in which is antithetical to everything christian and uh and, and american is marxist they openly declare they're marxist they openly declare that they're against the nuclear family they're against faith christian faith and family the foundations of the christianity they openly declare these things and it's recently come to light that they're also into african spiritism and devil worship which of course we are opposed to that but when you bring these points up, even Christian people, a lot of people say, well, I don't believe in the, the organization. I believe in Black Lives Matter. And of course, who's going to say that Black Lives don't matter? I don't like the term Black Lives Matter because it, it infers that Black Lives haven't mattered up until now. It infers something that, uh, like, we have to make a statement that Black Lives Matter. 
because they haven't mattered or they don't matter, which is not true. We can look at our history of America, that America has grown and uh, a land of opportunity for many black people and people, no, no, other, no other country in the world has raised black people up to the heights that they are in, in, in politics, in sports, in celebrityism, in wealth like America. And so I try my best to help people understand that you can be for the advancement of colored people without supporting Black Lives Matter, but here's the problem. You can't separate the two. When you say the phrase Black Lives Matter, that is another coin in their bank. That is another, uh, uh, what should I say, another plus in their category. They're going to, they're profiting off of everyone saying Black Lives Matter. And the difficulty we are having, I'll admit, is getting people to differentiate, to, to make a, differ, uh, a difference between them, to see that you cannot align with the, the slogan Black Lives Matter and not support the organization, the Marxist communist organization of Black Lives Matter because they're profiting from it. And this, I would admit, is a difficult area that we're having because, as I said, no one's going to say that black lives don't matter. No one's going to say or disagree with that term, that slogan. It's a very ingenious slogan. But the problem we're having is trying to get people to realize that when you support that, I, I'm even an advocate for coming up with a new name or something else to support it. But that name is fueling and uh, aiding in the pushing of the propaganda and the agenda of Black Lives Matter in the Black community. Reverend McCoy? Yeah, yeah quite honestly, um, Peggy, to answer your, uh, I think it's uh, Penny to answer your question quickly, is um, you asked the person, how do you, well, you asked us, how can we get this word out? One, uh, there are countless leaders around this country that are very concerned about this issue and a concern about BLM, the statements of it. And, uh, and I think you're going to see a turning of the dial on this, quite honestly, uh, as people get more informed. Information is a, is a powerful thing. Education is a powerful thing. Uh, ironically, the Black Lives Matter, who th doesn't even stand for educational choice. So it's amazing. But, but also, the other question that I say real simply is, do you believe uh, following the money is, is true? So if you follow the money, uh, go to at Black Lives Matter. And I tell people this all the time. Go to Black Lives Matter yourself. Click on the donate button, see which, and read. Uh, once you read, you find out this is an at blue charity. This is an at blue organization. At blue is doing nothing but putting things exactly that way. Uh, funding blue candidates, funding Democratic Party candidates, funding the folk, the very folks that, uh, be honest, are quite that don't even support some of the real issues that are going to help change these communities. So if we look at those hard hit communities, we look at Baltimore city, we look at Chicago, we look at Detroit, we can go down the list of the cities around our country. Who are they led by? They are led by folks who have been in that party line and that party system for quite some times and years upon years upon years and change has not come. So um, if you want to keep funding that kind of thing in your cities, go to act, go to BLM and, and click on the donate button and give them money because that's what you're going to get more of. You're not going to get change. You're not going to get a uh, reformation. You're not going to get transformation. And so, so I just want to make sure I say that. And, and the more we tell people that, the more the light bulbs go off, the more the question marks come and the more they say, Oh my goodness, I didn't know. So it's up to us and it's incumbent upon other media outlets. And that's why we're really doing this is to make sure we get that word out there. And the more people that hear it are changing. And in conclusion, in conclusion uh, with us at CCC, my grandfather, paternal grandfather, gave his life to this nation to fight to make sure we have freedoms. Every time Mr. Donahoe and organizations such as his Nikes and others, when they fund Marxist organizations, it's a slap in the face of those of us who have had parents, grandparents that have fought wars, have a son that is in the military. It's an affront. Because what you're saying is, those that have made the ultimate sacrifice and are willing to put their lives in line to make sure that you and I, here in America, can be safe from this type of tyranny. When you fund organizations like Black Lives Matter, you're actually fighting against those men and women that are on the front line, not just military, but our great police officers that protect our cities, our great men and women of uniform to make sure that our cities are squashed of this type of debacle that we're seeing lived out. And so Nike, every time you fund 
BLM. You're funding the demise and it is a, a front, it is a slap in the face to those of us kids like myself whose grandparent or sons and daughters serve our nation. A conservative clergy of color, it's simple. We're saying stop because you're dividing America and we will not allow it to continue to go on without giving an alternative voice. And that is who we are. All right. I would like to thank everybody for being here this morning for your participation. And I'd like to thank um, all four of our uh, ministers who we have here today for their thoughts. So um, thank you again. And uh, hope everybody has a wonderful day and uh, a great Labor Day weekend. Sorry, a quick question. Uh, I would love to get a copy of the letter you guys sent to Mike. Uh, Will, can I uh, follow up with you to get that letter from you after this? Uh, sure thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'd like that too. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, let me... I'll, I'll see about getting that over to you guys uh, as soon as we wrap up here. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a great one. Thanks again. Have a good one, gentlemen. Thank you.